Okay, thank you, thank you, Colin. Um, it'd be very, very nice now if we had unlimited time to give you all an examination question and say, uh, what would you do out of all of these various insights? Because what we've had here is we've had lots of lots of interesting visions, yes? We've had the vision of what happens when you start decentralizing in Tanzania and the very nuts and bolts problems that you've got there. Those alarming questions of how on earth do you reach marginalized um, female farmers in a remote area of, of Zambia. Um, the fascinating insight on can you apply good management principles in the case of, of, of northern region of, of, of Ghana to make incremental change, which left me all the time thinking, what about the politics of this and the incentives in the organization? And then Colin comes back with the, the Kenyan and Malawi insights there, which are very much about incentives that apply to individuals within a set of structures which are set up within a political context. And so you've done a terrific job in, 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 in covering the territory. I'm not sure we've got the answers on, on, on what you do. Comments, queries, questions, senor. Uh, na na name and affiliation first, please. Uh, uh, Ian Bust, uh, formerly DFID, uh, now with Pan International and with uh, Interact Worldwide. Um, I, Colin's really put it all before us. And I wonder whether there is some way of making an organic link between the performance assessments of field staff, and I know that they operate often at a higher level of this, and the, and the view of the communities whom they are serving. But it seems to me if there was, uh, was a regular assessment, even although you would still get lots of inequity, no doubt about that, it would be moderated and at least you might get those locations or areas where staff have been particularly effective, standing up for and shouting for their, their people. And that would have a beneficial effect because those who had received the praise would know that they'd received the backing of their own communities. Uh, I was going to ask a question about Tanzania. I'll do that separately later. Okay. Uh, thanks very much. My name is uh, Paul Skidmore from the Africa Governance Initiative. Um, we do some work with um, the Ministry of Agriculture in Sierra Leone um, and also actually the Ministry of Health. So if you ever do want to have a compare and contrast, we can chat about that. Um, we also work in the Office of the President in Sierra Leone and I think one of the um, bits of the picture that I'd be interested in your reflections on is the sort of link between the ministries upwards as opposed to the ministries downwards because I think a lot of the conversation today has been about strengthening the links between the ministries and the districts. But quite a lot of the problems that you're talking about from sort of the politics to questions around finance actually are to do with the links between ministries and the rest of government, both in terms of the centre of government and particularly ministries of finance and presidencies, but also in terms of how you kind of convene and corral other ministries that have critical roles to play in rural services, whether that's infrastructure or whatever. Hi, I'm Dave Steedle. I'm an independent. Uh, just reflecting on some of these things, I mean, some of us have had many, many years in these areas, 30, 40 years, and we've seen these inefficiencies and we've seen these interventions and we've seen these attempts to tinker. Uh, just out of interest, I've just come back from five years in Bhutan. Now, in Bhutan, basically, in terms of efficiency, everything does work. You've got a government that really wants to decentralize. You've got people out there. I've worked with health and agriculture, all these things together. Health is delivering fantastically at a local level. Education is delivering fantastically. Agriculture and forestry are really one of the most powerful ministries. But they don't deliver in the area you're talking about, which is how to help the marginal farmers. Because Bhutan is trying to move from being subsistence farmers to cash farmers. Mm -hmm. And I'm not particularly convinced that even with the best will in the world, the average extension officer is particularly good at understanding what a marginal farmer's problems are and how to get them to move into the commercial markets. I'm not sure they even understand these things. And I've been at these participative meetings we've had with marginal farmers where we've come down and talked to them about value chain and everything else. There's this poor marginal farmer thinking, what on earth is going on? And what they're basically getting is a lecture. So are we actually, really, are ministries of agriculture the people that we should be seeking to deliver on at these decentralized levels. Can we continue to pump money into helping extension officers? We've been doing it forever. Are there better ways of delivering? I mean, I don't want to hog this anymore, and I've seen some better examples. But that, if you like, is just another view. Should we actually be working through 
Ministry of Agriculture again and again and again. Thank you. Hello, my name's Tom Levitt, another independent. Um, one would expect that where multinational companies uh, are supply starting their supply chains uh, in these countries, there would be a push and an expectation of higher levels of efficiency. A, is that the case? B, does that lead to the local ministry staff being more efficient and being part of the uh, system or being excluded from the work that the multinationals are doing? And where there are good examples, uh, are there uh, mechanisms by which good practice can be established and have become more widespread? Okay. Shall we just have a, a, a response to those before we move on to uh, the second and what will have to be a final round of, of questions? So we've got questions there about uh, linking performance to community views. Um, what about the links at ministry level across the rest of government? Um, Big question about how you reach marginal farmers, whether it's through th through the, the the ministry, and what happens when multinational companies are part of the scene. Who'd like to, Sarah? Would you like to to respond to any or some of those? Okay. Um. Well. Okay. First, I guess as engineer as an engineer my my interest in the first question kind of around are there ways to create that organic link between performance assessment at the at the community level and 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 the assessment of of the extension staff um, I mean I think that mobile tech technology does offer a lot of opportunities to to start at establishing some of these systems and so um, it's something that we've been we've been looking into in Malawi, in our work in the water and sanitation sector, is is, is there a way for um, communities to actually have have more of a say and have a vote in, in how their government service is delivering the services that they want? Um, and I think I think it'd be really interesting to see how that evolves and um, to see if that is used in a in, in a positive way um, to actually allow the communities to define what performance is and to have that say. Um, maybe I'll pause and let, okay. yeah. Okay. Um, briefly on um, interactions between ministries, in the um, work in Zambia, I think we found evidence of, of nice policy statements, and especially around um, nutrition, and there is the National Nutrition <coughs> Council, I can't remember the exact acronym, which, because nutrition does need coordination across sectors so the the um, the need is there and recognized and articulated in the document but in practice what what happens is not well and not not enough or not, or not very much so I guess that those discussions can take place when there's a particular I mean nutrition is probably a good example where there's a specific issue that, of, that clearly requires that sort of coordination but I guess in areas where maybe there's not a clear um, uh, discussion to be had, then maybe that's that's hard. And I can't comment exactly what happened to the nutrition council in Zambia, but but we we did have that discussion about the need for coordination to on nutrition issues and and the lack of um, maybe progress in in providing a coordinated response. Um, on the the question about whether the Ministry of Agriculture is the right um, agency to be delivering to, to the poor or more marginalised farmers. I mean, this is exactly the discussion we were having earlier this afternoon amongst ourselves. And um, I guess within, again, within the Zambia work, when we looked at who was providing for who, certainly the Ministry of Community Development and Social Welfare, who provide the food security pack, were more directly um, reaching or potentially reach those farmers, um, and that was outside the Ministry of Agriculture. What, um, I suppose one of the questions we had with that research was that agriculture was clearly an area where women said that they wanted more support as the, the, the only livelihood opportunity open to them at that moment. So they saw that agriculture is their you know, future, and um, 
so they see that the Ministry of Agriculture has, has a role. Whether whether it can meet that, I don't know. But certainly, agriculture was still seen as a um, a route of development. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Rebecca. Cool. Come on. Okay. Um, if there's a if there's a sort of common thread to my comments, I guess it's thinking about the sort of fundamental. Um, drivers and incentives for good performance and if, if they are there and they're strong then I think <coughs> some of the other things that you, you can do to tackle p detailed problems they will be addressed because they, they have to be addressed to meet the performance so let's see if I can explain that. So in terms of linking performance assessment to beneficiary views um, I think yes that would be very desirable at the moment I think the, the I'm not sure that the the ministry is ready to do that. You know, if you could move from the top down performance contract to the bottom up, if the ministry was willing to do that, I think that would be a a very good uh, a very good thing to do. Whether you could then link that to promotions in hiring and firing, that's a more difficult second question, I think. <laughs> Um, but uh, if you've got a performance contract from the top down, if you could add a, it or replace it with a bottom up, I think that would be an incremental improvement. Um, yes, whether you can then link that to a reward is what's, which is what's more difficult because of the centralisation of the hiring system. Um, Paul, at, your, at the national level, um, again, at, at the risk of being very stylized here. My, as I look at ministries in, in Kenya, um, as a minister or, a ver or a, possibly even an assistant minister and maybe even a PS, um, it seems to me that the fundamental thing you have to do is to be able to help to bring in the regional vote in a presidential election. And if you don't, you're unlikely to remain a minister. If you do, um, then, then, you're, then you're safe. Um, and uh, that therefore means, and the ministry to some extent is even a source of patronage to enable you to do that. Uh, so that's one of the cases where the sort of the patronage politics and the, and the stated public policy objectives pull in quite different directions. And at the other side, um, the parliamentary committees are not very effective in scrutinising. Uh, ministry performance, and I'm not sure that voters are yet asking MPs to do that. In fact, there's some evidence from Tanzania recently that the, that the MPs who were most active in national policy making were the most likely to be deselected at the last election. Um, so from neither end is there a very strong um, incentive for the ministry to perform at the senior level. So whilst that's the case, actually getting them to coordinate is a sort of secondary question. If they don't have very strong incentives to perform full <coughs> stop, they don't have very strong incentives to work together. So there have been efforts in Kenya, there's a thing called the Agricultural Sector Coordination Unit, which is a, having scattered these ministries from three to nine to then try and draw them back together, but it's been very hard work. In fact, our colleague who we worked with on this has been the head of that coordination unit for quite a while. and. Uh, Yes, some successes, but hard going and basically clawing background that was lost through the proliferation of ministries. My experience from elsewhere is that if the Ministry of Agriculture and Livestock and Roads and others are seen as equal and see themselves as equal, no one likes being coordinated by anybody else. And so unless it goes to the office of the President or the or, or Prime Minister or something to bring them together, actually they're quite reluctant to work together, so you need to sort of politically trumpet a bit. Um, Dave, on the, uh, do we need to go back to the ministry? I mean, this is a question in, in, in Kenya. We've talked about, uh, it within our project, we've talked about how much might you contract out to NGOs or even a bit like Uganda tried to have some... Um, you know, people who had specialist expertise in maybe particular commodities who could cover the whole commodity chain and could be called in and you could sort of draw down their services and use local budgets to do that. And I think there's a place for, for some of that. Again, if you've got a ministry that's really looking to perform, I think <coughs> th there's real chances to do that. But in Kenya, you have a World Bank project which is looking 
to, to try something a little bit along those lines. You have Danida who are trying to look at coordination on the stakeholder fora. There are all sorts of models being piloted in Kenya. The assumption from the donor side is if they're successful, they'll be scaled up. But I'm not sure that that's the assumption from the ministry side. It's more, you know, we take the resources and they can stay as pilots. But there's been no effort, as far as I'm aware, to do a cross-cutting review. Which of these is now working the best after several years? Let's adopt it. Um, so I think that is an issue. But they're also on the practical side, more commercial farmers in better located areas would be the prime beneficiaries of this. Your soil fertility issues, your striga, where you have externalities from one farm to the other, I think would be missed. So if you are to go to a sort of partial contracting out, I think it should be partial so that you've at least got some capability to cover those more difficult cross-cutting issues and the farmers who are going to miss it. So I think you're looking for a dual system. Um, would be my view. Finally, um, multinational supply chains. I can't think of any good examples that I've seen in our case studies. Um, so I talked about in Near East South about where you had supply chains that were functioning fairly well, but largely it was local players there. And what happened was the ministry did continue to provide some extension support, but it ceased to be a major player in those chains, really. Um, and so things like the soil fertility issues that didn't fall neatly within a chain did get, uh, did, did get missed out. OK. Um, the, clock, the clock has hopelessly defeated me. Um, we're almost 10 minutes past time, so I think we're just going to have to truncate the formal discussion here. If people like Anthony have a specific one, I'm sure that um, our panellists will, will, will answer you. But thank you ever so much for coming along on a very cold night. Uh, the one final thought I take away from this is we've, we've had a long gap in looking at how ministers of agriculture uh, do, do their business. There are a lot of pilots out there and for those of us who are academics drawing together some of those more field level insights, there must be things that work, there must be positive deviance as you call them Sarah that we can learn more from and, uh, and uh, get, that, get that message disseminated. Um, will you join with me with thanking Rebecca, Sarah and Colin for some extremely stimulating presentations. Thank you very much.